time. And so, oh my gosh. So Jamie, going into day three, I don't know if you were able to catch any of the other matches, but is there anything you're looking forward to being able to see today? We did get a sneak peek of some of the teams and there is a couple of very interesting Pokemon that I am very excited to see. Uh, and we will be getting to that very shortly uh, because we are going to be featuring uh, Malaysia versus Honduras first. We can have a quick look at how they are doing so far. And it seems that Malaysia have won this week already uh, with a 5-1 record. As you, soon as you get that five, that, those five wins, uh, you're feeling pretty comfortable because you haven't won that week at this point. Uh, but still some, some things to play for. So, of course, Akleef and Xavier are going to be putting their all into this match. Absolutely. There's still two more matches to go. So just try and get a little bit of uh, wins for Honduras. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just so excited and especially just to see the way meta shift uh, and the way play styles differ depending on where you're from, especially regional differences. I'm based over here in Toronto. So one of my favorite things about the World Cup is being able to see the diversity of players, of teams and just play styles that arise. You can see some really interesting uh, teams coming out there, uh, but I think that this is going to be the most interesting out of those teams, uh, given what we have seen on, as a sneak preview of the teams going to be run here. So uh, I'm very excited to get into this match. Oh, gosh, it's going to be great. So let's take a look at our teams here and, of course, our players. So with Akleef 2016 Singapore Nationals Top 32, a really nice title uh, under his belt. And uh, with Xavier, we don't have uh, much information uh, to show, but doesn't mean uh, you can't discount him just yet, especially when scouting can be such an issue when you can look back and see past performances and things like that. Yeah, you still have to be scared of any opponents, even though uh, there's no accomplishments uh, in real life. I'm sure there's going to be some coming and you can definitely get some great achievements in the future. And it's going to be a great match between these two players. As you can see, we have two Kieran Whites coming out, uh, one for each side. We've got a Calyrex Shadow for a Cleef and a Groudon coming out for Xavier. Look at this team. Oh my gosh, these sets of teams right here. Oh, that Cinderace bringing back the nostalgia from, you know, back in the early seasons, you know, with that libero ability. Really excited to see Cinderace come out to play. Jamie, talk about this Toxapex and this Agron. I have never seen uh, these two come to play. <laughs> Yeah, and that, it, they are very, very interesting picks there. Uh, the Agron, it usually is going to be a stack attacker for most cases, because that tends to uh, do a little bit more uh, than the Agron does for the Rock Steel uh, type coming out there, because you can get the Trick Room, you can get those Gyrables. Uh, but there are a couple of nice things that Agron can do. You can get some very strong head smashes coming out from the Agron uh, with the Rock Head as well, so you don't get any recoil. You've also got that Sturdy Endeavor combination. Uh, it's usually on the Aaron, but Agron can absolutely do it itself. And Toxapex uh, is very interesting. Mate. Very good against opposing Zacians. Uh, would be able to beat it 1v1, but it would be quite slow in beating it 1v1, uh, so you need to be able to take care of all the counters as well. Uh, probably not going to be seeing that Tox Pex in this match, given that it's facing Calyrex Shadow instead, uh, but right. uh, interesting picks nonetheless. Oh, and we can't ignore that Ditto. Ditto is one of the most fun Pokemon to see come to play. It really forces you to adapt on the fly, and so I'm really excited to see Ditto come out. It's nice to see that Indeedee there for that redirection, and Talon Flame. Jamie, have you been seeing Talonflame around recently? Because, you know, it's been a little bit, you know, it's still prevalent, but I feel like Talonflame has dropped a little bit. Uh, yeah, you from do what I've seen. You, you do say, tend to see Whimsicott and Tornadus instead of the Talonflame, but uh, this is very reminiscent of the team that uh, Nathan Ortis used to get top 16 in uh, the Indianapolis Regional, and then got top 4 again with a Sableye over the Ndidi, but uh, it seems that Akleef is uh, relying on the Ndidi for this version here, and we are going to jump straight into that game, and there's the Agron straight away, so I am very excited to see that paired along with the Groudon, and there is that Talonflame with the Kiram White, so uh, the Kiram is going to be in a very, very nice position here. It's going to be able to get its speed control if it needs to, but it's going to tend to outspeed Groudon and Agron regardless, and you can just go for uh, uh, the Ice-type moves to KO the Groudon, and even if the Agron is sturdy, then Kiram can just ignore that completely with its Turbo Blaze, so uh, that is going to be a very, really nice matchup uh, for this Kiram. Uh, maybe someone like a Choice Scarf Agron could come out, but then you've got the Talonflame to just click Tailwind, so if you do click Tailwind this turn, uh, your Kiram is probably picking up a knockout on either the Agron or the Groudon. Uh, even if the Agron Dynamaxes, it's going to go down to the uh, Max Quake that could come out from the Kiram. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that that Kieran go on the, on the offensive with the Dynamax straight away. That is what tends to happen with Kieran's, especially since you tend to run more uh, risky moves like Blizzards uh, to be able to do the most amount of damage possible. And you really want to be going for the max move uh, in order to uh, get that sh uh, shaky accuracy into 100% and then set up the hail for the future. 
Yeah, absolutely. And just as predicted, this Curum has come to play. We're going to see the offensive pressure right out of the gate. This giant first Dynamax of our games here. Look at that beautiful Curum adding tons and tons of pressure. And really, we're going to have to see how Xavier is going to adjust. And this is game one. So we are focused on the information gathering, seeing what movesets each other has gone. Groudon going for a solid protect here. Again, trying to kind of figure out what is the first move that's going to come out to play. We're going to see Talonflame come in with that Flare Blitz targeting that Aggron. Going to do a ton. Oh, uh, no, not actually. Not that much damage. That Aggron is bulky. So under half damage. Here comes the Max Quake coming into that Aggron as well. Is it enough to get the final KO? It is! And Aggron goes down. Yeah, unfortunately, Aggron not going to be able to do anything in this match, uh, even though it's such an exciting Pokemon to see. But down it goes, not surviving that combination of Flare Blitz and Max Quake. Uh, probably not even just surviving the Max Quake in general as well. Uh, the Groudon, a little bit of a wasted protect, unfortunately, for coming out for Xavier. Uh, so that definitely puts the uh, Cleave on the offensive here taking out one of the, the threats to, from Xavier's side of the field. So if it went for a head smash from the Aggron into the Kiram, that would have done a lot of damage. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually KO'd the Kiram uh, because that would have been such a strong move. But we'll never know what the Aggron is going for in this game one. Uh, but Cinderace coming in here means that you probably do need to be clicking Tailwind with the Talonflame at this point. Uh, we'll have to see how the Talonflame is trained as well because its Gale Wings has been broken thanks to its own Flare Blitz recoil. Uh, so if it is not run max speed, then the Cinderace could still potentially outspeed it and get the attack off before the Talonflame would be able to go for that Tailwind. But Talonflame is naturally faster than the Cinderace, so the speed interactions here are going to be very crucial because you are getting the Dynamax coming out from Xavier's side of the field. Uh, do you get some Talon Flames trained with bulk? So you have to sacrifice some speed or an attack to be able to get that uh, get that bulk cut. So we'll have to see the interactions of the speed here from not even a G Max Cinderace. It's just going to be the regular a one. Dynamax Cinderace, yeah, that is always so interesting to see because uh, that would set. Sun. You know, we already do have the sun out right now, but Dynamax Cinderace does allow that. We're going to see a max knuckle thanks to Cinderace's libero. It is going to change the typing, but because of the protect, it's not going to go off. There is that ta tail uh, tailwind coming in as predicted right here, but definitely interesting to see the Dynamax choice on the Cinderace. Okay, Ground's going to go into that talent flame. Not enough to get the knuckle, oh, but no. unfortunately, the paralysis, Jamie, that's definitely not fun to see. No, not at all, especially because you've got that Tailwind, so you would have put yourself faster than the Cinderace. We did see Cinderace outsped the Talonflame, uh, but you, you saw the downside and the upside of both running mm -hmm. uh, bulkier Talonflame because uh, would have been able to get the Tailwind off before the Cinderace would have been able to attack. That would have probably allowed the Kirim to go on the offensive rather than the Max Guard, uh, but also it was able to survive the Thunder Punch, whereas it wouldn't have been able to if it was that speedy variant. So uh, a little bit of an upside and downside since that paralysis is very unfortunate for the Talonflame because then how that, that puts the Cinderace once again faster. Uh, but here is that wonderful tech that the Talonflame do end up carrying is the cost up to act first. Wow, look at that. Beautiful information coming out. Groudon going in with the Protect Talent Flame. Not going to... Oh, the big avoid there. Oh, that's not to hurt. Not being able to get that Will-O-Wisp onto the Cinderace. And then we are going to see uh, Groudon take a ton of damage, but still at above, uh, above a third or so and taking that damage here. We are going to see the hail come out from that Max Ice move right here, taking a bit of damage as... Well, Cinderace is going to come in with that Max Knuckle, changing to a fighting type. Going to go into that Kyurem, do a nice chunk of damage, bring it to under half HP. Yeah, and so that's going to be just the attack of the, the Groudon and the Cinderace as well. So they're going to be putting on a lot more offensive pressure. And yeah, Life Orb coming out from the Cinderace makes a lot of sense. That is a pretty common item uh, to be able to get that massive damage coming out. But setting the hail has done some nice things in setting, making your Blizzard 100% accurate, overwriting the sun. And you also knock out your own Talonflame. And I don't think that's a particularly bad thing if you're uh, on a cleave side of the field. That gives you a switch in into one of the Pokemon in the back. The Talonflame could have gone for a Flare Blitz and wouldn't have done as much damage, especially because you overwrote the sun now. Uh, and it could have gone for the Widows as well, but the cost Berry was used up so the Cinderace would outspeed uh, the opposing Talonflame before it would be able to go for that will -Wisp. So now the Indeedee is going to join the field instead of that Talonflame. You get to just go for redirection with the Indeedee now. It's revealing the Psychic Seed as well, so it's going to be able to take on the special attacks better, but it's facing down the two uh, physical attackers here, uh, which isn't too bad because you just get to really just go for a very safe follow me 
and a Blizzard, and there's nothing really that uh, Xavier can do to stop that, and Cinderace probably will survive the attack of the Blizzards, because it is still in its Dynamax form for one more turn. Not a fire type at the moment, so it will take the full amount of damage because of its fighting type, and Kieran will still be moving first because of that earlier Tailwind. Uh, you could choose to go for an Expanding Force as well, maybe you're expecting the Indeedy to be able to outspeed uh, with the Tailwind as well, depending on how it's trained. Uh, if you run min speeds so that you can get the uh, guaranteed terrain, you may not be outspeeding, then you'd probably need to follow me. If you do outspeed, the Cinderace is a fighting type at the moment, the Expanding Force would do a lot of damage. Oh, and we're seeing that Groudon swap out into the Incineroar. So Incineroar coming out, dropping that Intimidate, but we do have to remember the Psychic Terrain is also out. So uh, while Incineroar does have Fake Out, you do have to watch out for this terrain right here. Indeedy going to go for that Follow Me. As you said, Jamie, this is a pretty free attack here for this Kiram. That Blizzard's going to come out. Let's see how much damage it does. Oh, wow. To Cinderace. And oh my god, oh, no. the free Lucky for the Incineroar. Oh no, there's that Max Darkness coming out from Cinder. It's going to change its typing to Darkness. Wow, this was quite the set of turn. Let's gonna see who it's gonna target. It's gonna go into that Indeedy and boom. There goes Indeedy. Didn't have that much of a chance to shine. Going down in one hit, getting that Spadef drop as well on the Kiram. Wow. Yeah, choosing to go for the, the follow me instead of the expanding force there probably indicates that it's a pretty slow indeedy wanting to get that terrain up uh, instead of going on the offensive when you've got the tailwind. Uh, so keeping the Kiram safe from that darkness attack. Uh, but now the Cinderace and the Incineroar are both dark types. With this Calyrex coming in, they're both going to resist the Astral Barrage, but I think the damage has been done to the Cinderace at this point, especially because the Psychic Terrain is up then it can't go for the Sucker Punch into this Calyrex that it would love to do at this point, because that is the end of the Dynamax for the Cinderace. It's taking so much damage, it's going to be in range of the Astral Barrage, so you really just get to go for a pretty safe Earth Power into the Incineroar. Even a Shuckerberry wouldn't activate at this point, because Calyrex is on the field, so that would stop that with its as one. And then the Cinderace is absolutely in range of the Astral Barrage here. Cinderace don't opt, opt to carry Protect very often, because you have so many coverage moves that you want, and dropping one of them from Protect doesn't tend to happen too much. And yeah, the Psychic Terrain's up, that's not going to work, I'm afraid, Cinderace. Yeah, unfortunately not. And there is that Astral Barrage going to do that damage and likely to take out. Yep, the Cinderace goes down. Incineroar taking a tiny bit of damage, but Incineroar still frozen on the field. We'll have to see about Incineroar thawing out in just a second here. There is that Calyrex ability getting that boosted special attack. And there is that safe Earth Power going into that Incineroar. That looks like it's definitely going to KO. Sorry, little cat. It was not your day today. So yeah, really great plays coming in from Akleef here. Really smart movements and positioning. And uh, we're going to see this last Pokemon come out. Yeah, it's going to be that Groudon coming back out. Yeah. But I think don't think it's going to be able to, to put it back for, for Xavier, unfortunately. It's taken so much damage. Uh, even if the Kiram could only go for Blizzard to be able to hit the Groudon and maybe it would miss, you've still got a 100% single target Astral Barrage coming its way from the Calyrex as well. So really nicely played from a cleave there. A uh, bit of a shame to see the Aggron just drop straight away. It could have done some very nice things against the opposing Kiram uh, if it was positioned correctly, but the Kiram just was able to outspeed and get the speed control with the Talonflame as well for most of that game. So uh, really the Kiram was just run, able to run away with the game. Maybe if the Cinderace went for an airstream, it could have put itself faster than the, the Kiram. And we did see it outsped the Talonflame. So if it went for the attack into the Talonflame, uh, as the Kieran went for the Max Guard, you could have potentially picked up the Knockout, and then you'd have stopped the Tailwinds and got the Speed Control, so maybe the Cinderace would have been able to get the Reverse Wick there instead. Yeah, there was a lot of information gathered that game, and really it's going to come down to how we're going to adjust into Game 2. And, you know, looking back at that Game 1, really, I really appreciated that, you know, that free switch into that Indeedy was also so helpful. A lot of times you have to kind of make that decision, you know, if you're going to swap in or just kind of let the cards play as they are and adjust, you know, as needed. And so I'm looking forward to Game 2, seeing, you know, how those leads are going to change, who's going to come back in. Yeah, I, 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 want, I want to see the Tox effects. I know it is not the yeah. matchup for it, but you never see a Tox effects, and I want to see a Tox effects. So uh, I'm glad we at least saw the Aggron hit the field. Uh, maybe leave it in the back this time so you can maybe uh, get some some speed control going on your own. If you do have Airstream on the Cinderace with the bounce, uh, you could potentially be going for that and put a stop to the Talonflame, hopefully, uh, going for the Tailwinds, because it did go on the offensive with just the Flare Blitz on that first turn. Right. It broke its own Gale Wings. If it doesn't have Gale Wings and you get your Cinderos on the field, you now know that you outspeed. So you would be able to get that attack off into the opposing talent flame uh, it is run bulky because it has sacrificed some speed and wow we're exactly reading my mind leading with the tox effects here with the cinderace and stick uh, just sticking with the kiram and the talent flame ask and you shall receive look at that tox effects coming in 
to play with a Cinderace lead, a lot more of an offensive pressure coming out. And we are definitely looking at uh, potentially, again, Kirim is a great Dynamax option right away. So, Jamie, what are you feeling going into this type of lead matchup? Yeah, I think it's going to depend on if the Talon Flame is, is bulky enough to survive the Cinderace, because like we've seen the, the speed interactions at this point. Uh, but it right. does have its tail wings now. So le leaning it like this into the Cinderace, you're probably going to be picking Tailwind instead of going on the offensive with the Talon Flame. And even if the Cinderace does outspeed, and we are seeing it most likely go for the Dynamax, I'd be surprised if it's the Toxapex, uh, then <laughs> it will be able to, to do some massive damage to the Talon Flame. And we'll see if it is bulky enough to survive. If it goes for the Kirim, we've seen that Max Knuckle is not enough uh, to be able to KO the Kirim, and then you'd be able to respond back with some massive damage. Uh, it does have access to the Max Wormwind. That would be doing a lot of damage as well. And it does look like a, a Cleave is going to be matching that Dynamax. So matching with the Kirim, are going to be getting that offensive pressure onto the Cinderace straight away. And with the Talon Flame still having its Gale Wings, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see the Tailwind here. The Kirim would then be able to outspeed the opposing Cinderace, and then it would still be a Fire type at this point if you went for a Ground type move into that Cinderace before it went for any kind of airstream, uh, that would almost certainly be a knockout. Yeah, the speeds here are going to be absolutely pivotal. There is that Tailwind going to allow that Kirim to grab that speed. Move first, there goes the Max Quake, especially crucial because of Libero changing that uh, typing. So boom, one hit knockout. Cinderace going down turn one. That has got to hurt losing that Dynamax right away. We're going to see that Spideff increase on the Kirim as well as the Talon Flame. And oh, just as quickly as it went up, it is going down right here. Oh, that's never a fun feeling to see. We're going to have to see uh, how this Toxapex goes in. Goes in with an icy wind, trying okay. to get a little bit of that speed control coming back, lowering the speed of both, both that Pokemon. But that's a little bit of a rough situation. Yeah, losing your Dynamax without it attacking on turn one is definitely what I would call a rough situation. Uh, mm -hmm. There is not much offensive pressure on Savvy's side of the field anymore. Uh, the Toxapex going for Icy Winds, that's some nice speed control, but it's not going to counter the Tailwind unless you go for three of them. And that would be all of Kirim's Dynamax turns used up at that point anyway, so it doesn't particularly matter. Uh, you get to very safely ignore this Toxapex if it's just spamming Icy Wind. Uh, usually the Toxapex, it goes for a very, very slow endgame that will eventually win. Uh, but when you're facing when you're facing yeah. down the offensive pressure of the Kirim, uh, there is not much left to do, especially if you don't have your Dynamax anymore. And that is just going to be a quick one turn game for that game two. And a cleave is going to take it for Malaysia. Yeah, and GG, sometimes that is the way the game rolls. And it's nice to kind of recognize, you know, a lot of times when you're playing these high level games, you have to think of your long term win conditions. And if you can't find a way to turn and pivot the game around, sometimes forfeiting is the best option. But really creative teams to see, seeing the Toxapex and Agron is just so much fun. And sometimes that's what it's all about, having a good time, trying some things new. And really, we got to see some interesting and cool plays, especially in that game one. Yeah, yeah, we did. So we got to see both of the cool Pokemon hit the field in that Toxapex and the Aggron. Uh, Aggron, we didn't get to see it do anything at all, but we at least, at least saw the Toxapex. So uh, yeah, that, that Kirim doing uh, far too much damage there. Uh, not It was interesting to see Xavier did have a Kirim of, of, of his own and didn't end up bringing it to the match. Brought just one restricted in the ground on both games. Uh, I think the Cinderace was a very good call going into the Kirim because right. it has that knuckle. And potentially, you would assume Airstream, and most of Cinderace do end up carrying that, especially the Life Orb variants, uh, but not going for their own Kirim to try and match the opposing one uh, meant that when they had the Agron and the Toxapex, as cool as they, they are, they weren't really putting on too much of what the Agron potentially was doing a lot of offensive pressure, but got taken care of straight away. Toxapex is, like I said, very, very slow, no offensive pressure at all. It may eventually win if you stockpile up and toxic things, uh, but that's going to take a long time. And Kiram is strong enough to just completely blast through that. And we saw Xavier immediately realize that in that game, too, and that was just the game over immediately. Yeah, and you know, looking at that speed control, there's so many different ways you can obtain speed control, but Talon Flame and you know having this Kiram, it's so quick and that hyper offensive type team. So really, you know, even if you have other ways of speed control, it just you weren't able to catch up quick enough uh to kind of match this the speed that Akleve was putting out. Yeah, so the the Kiram on Akleve sub was but like having in the driving seat for pretty much all of that game as soon as it got the speed control. So uh, yeah, very, very nice showing coming out for a cleave there. And what Kieran White can do, it can very much steamroll some games. So a uh, great, great game coming out for this game one. We will be cutting to a short break and we'll be right back with Israel versus El Salvador. <laughs> 